Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Today the practical that we're going to revise is stool examination. Okay, so first of all the introduction. Uh, stool examination is done in the laboratories to identify the infectious cause, uh, whether it is a simple diarrhea or it is a dysentery or any worm infection or some causes of jaundice. Uh, now let's discuss the precautions that are required to be taken while performing the stool examination. So first of all, when feces are collected, they should be collected in a clean and dry and leak-proof container which is free from antiseptics and not mixed with urine. Secondly, it should be examined with few minutes, uh, within few minutes after reaching the lab as in case of dysentery uh, and amoeba histolytica after some time. Okay, uh, there are three types of examinations uh, that we perform on stools. First of all, there is a physical examination, then there is chemical examination, and thirdly, there is microscopic examination. So, firstly, we'll discuss about the physical examination. So, in physical examination, there are some uh, parameters that we're going to look for. So, first of all, there is consistency. Whether it's formed, it's semi-formed or unformed and watery, this uh, can be detected by just looking at the stool samples. Then, uh, whether pus cells are present or not in the fecal specimen and uh, the bacillary dysentery will show many pus cells while uh, amoebic dysentery will have scanty or less pus cells. Then frothy stools are seen in pancreatitis and giardiasis and some other infections uh, which are associated with uh, malabsorption. Then um, diarrheal stools uh, can be mixed with blood and mucus and these are seen in two types of causes for example the parasitic causes and the non-parasitic causes. Uh, parasitic causes may include amoebic dysentery, intestinal uh, cystosomiasis, severe tricura infection and among non-parasitic causes we have bacillary dysentery, campylobacter enteritis and ulcerative colitis and intestinal malignancies or tumors. The second one is color after consistency. So uh, normal color of the stools is uh, due to the presence of uh, one uh, pigment which is called stercobilinogen which is produced by the decomposition of bilirubin and uh, the pale colored stools uh, may show that there can be obstructive jaundice and black or tarry colored stools are present in upper GI bleed while uh, red colored stools or um, reddish stools are, may be present in lower GI bleed. Then we have uh, odor or smell. So the normal odor is due to the presence of indole compounds and it also raises with the pH. Then parasites, uh, compound parasites which can be seen uh, in the stools in the physical examination are Ascaris lumbricoides, Entrobius vermicularis or tapeworm segments for example Tinea solium or Tinea sejuneta. So this was all about physical examination. Secondly we perform chemical examination. So this should be done to see blood and for detection of bilirubin, stercobilin, urobilinogen it also includes uh, detection of pH so mainly in chemical examination we need to look for the pH of the stools and um, whether there are these pigments uh, whether these pigments are present in the stool specimens or not so the normal pH of stools is either neutral or weakly alkaline uh, which ranges between 6.9 to 7.1 the third uh, type of examination that we are going to talk about is microscopic examination and uh, so again microscopic examinations have different um, varieties. For example, the first one is direct wet preparation. Uh, in this what are we going to do is, for example, uh, for dysentric and unformed specimens, uh, what are we going to do? We are going to add small amounts of feces which contain mucus and blood on the slide for example, as shown here, we are going to put the sample of the stool on the slide and cover it with a glass slip or a cover slip. And this was for unformed or dysentric specimens. For formed stools, uh, we are going to mix the um, a small amount of feces with saline on one end of the slide 
as shown here and um, on the other end of the slide we are going to add similar amount with iodine and then we are going to mix it well uh, both the ends and then we are going to cover it with the cover slip or slide uh, glass cover then we are going to examine the slide under microscope in this way uh, looking for all the uh, positions and not ignoring or not skipping any of the positions and also in uh, vertical lines and also in horizontal lines first of all we are going to examine it in 10x uh, lens and then uh, add 40x objective lens to identify motile trophozoites for example of histolytica antamoeba histolytica or uh, giardia lamblia the second one is fecal concentration technique so in this we perform these uh, four tests the formal uh, ether technique formal detergent technique sodium chloride flotation technique or zinc sulfate centrifugal technique so among the formal ether technique first of all what are we going to do we are going to emulsify 2 ml of feces and 3 ml saline in 15 ml of conical centrifuge tube and then we are going to add saline up to 15 mark okay so there's a tube in which we're going to add 2 ml of feces and 3 ml saline in 15 ml of conical tube and then we are going to add saline up to the 15 mark after that we're going to centrifuge it at 1500 revolutions per minute for one minute and then we're going to discard the supernatant supernatant is actually the fluid that remains on the top above the filtrate so we're going to uh, discard the supernatant and then we're going to resuspend the deposit in saline up to mark 15 okay after that again we're going to centrifuge it and discard the supernatant uh, supernatant again after that we're going to add 10 ml of 10 percent formalin as shown here then mix it well and allow to stand for five minutes so after that we're going to mix it and then allow to stand for five minutes and then we are going to add 3 ml of ether and centrifuge for 2 minutes. So this is 3 ml of ether and then we are going to centrifuge it for 2 minutes. And then prepare saline and iodine wet films as shown here. When we get the uh, sediments, we are going to put those uh, sediments into the slide and then we are going to observe it under microscope. And the formal uh, detergent technique is same as uh, performed in uh, formal ether technique, but the difference here is uh, in the addition of detergent. So in this case, we added ether, while for detergent, we add detergent instead of ether. Okay, the third one is NaCl or sodium chloride flotation technique. In this technique, we are going to take small amount of stools and we're going to dissolve it in hypertonic NaCl solution so that eggs float on the surface of fluids as shown here we're going to take small amount of feces in uh, NaCl solution and we're going to dissolve it and then uh, what happens is all the eggs are going to uh, float on the top and for that purpose we're going to uh, place slides on the edges of tube so that the eggs stick on it and are seen under the microscope so we are going to place the glass slides on the edge so that the floating eggs may um, attach to or uh, maybe attach to the slide and that can be viewed under the microscope. Then we have ZNSO4 centrifugal technique. In this technique we are going to take 1 gram of fresh, freshly prepared or freshly uh, passed stools and we are going to dissolve it in 1 ml of lukewarm water after that the filtrate is centrifuged at 2500 revolutions per minute then the supernatant fluid is discarded then water is added and repeat the procedure two three times until the supernatant is clear so we are going to repeat this procedure again and again so that we i mean we are going to add the water and we are going to remove after centrifugation we are going to remove the supernatant fluid and we are going to repeat it two to three times until the supernatant is clear then we are going to add znso4 zinc sulfate 3 to 4 ml in it and then centrifuge for one minute again and the surface film is then removed on the glass light and then uh, it is viewed under the microscope so for protozoal cyst drop of iodine is added 
and it is seen under microscope. Now occult blood. Occult blood as uh, you all know that it means it is the hidden blood which is normally not seen by the naked eye but um, it is it can be viewed uh, by performing some of the special tests and this is mainly associated with malignancies of the um, intestine or uh, due to some polyps. So the methods that are used to see occult blood in stools are ortholidine tests or chromatography methods. So uh, discussing the chromatography method, uh, it actually is a very powerful, a simple and inexpensive and rapid uh, test. So it has a plastic sheet which contains a silica gel on cellulose and a solvent. Uh, so this is, used in, uh, this is used to capture the blood in the stool and in this way when you're going to place a, a small specimen of um, stool on this plastic sheet what will happen that they will um, capture the blood and they will show that whether the uh, occult blood is positive or not. So you are required to write uh, these practicals on your copies and that was all about today. Thank you.